Welcome to the Business Interview. I'm Marcus Carlson. The race is on to become the next head of the World Trade Organization. The current Director General, Pascal Lamy, is due to step down later this year. Today, I'm sitting down with one of the nine candidates who want to fill his shoes. Mari Pangistu is currently the Indonesian Minister of Tourism and Creative Economy. Welcome to the Business Interview. Thank you, Marcus. Now, this is seen as quite a challenging time for global trade. The World Trade Organization itself has mm -hmm. warned of growing protectionism around the globe. And also, there's still no end in sight to the so-called Doha trade round, the, the negotiations to liberalize trade. Uh, what do you make of the current picture when it comes to global trade? Yes, it's challenging, as uh, you are saying. But that's exactly why we need to strengthen the WTO and complete uh, the negotiations. The rise of protectionism would have been worse in the sense after the 2008 crisis. Everybody was really afraid that there would be trade wars. If there was no WTO, I think it would have been worse. Uh, the, the existence of WTO and its rules-based framework and dispute settlement procedures, I think, helped to frame you know, that what countries do are limited. To, mm -hmm. you know, uh, within the rules. And if they go beyond the rules, then there's uh, disputes. So we need to strengthen, continue to strengthen the WTO. So WTO is not the same as Doha. You know, the rules-based framework of Doha, uh, of, sorry, of the WTO, we, we should continue to work on. Uh, and the way out of the crisis, you know, uh, is to make sure that trade grows. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, the growth of trade is about 1% lower than, than uh, the last 20 years uh, average. So the way to get boost to world uh, growth, create jobs, is to have trade grow. And to have trade grow, you need to have confidence in the multilateral trading system. Still Amongst though, others, complete Doha. Yeah. No, st still though, it, it is believed that there is this risk of growing protectionism yes. and, that, uh -huh. and that political leaders around the world, mm -hmm. they always have that sort of temptation mm -hmm. to, to raise trade mm -hmm. barriers in order to, to benefit or in order to benefit their countries. Uh, who are the main offenders? Where do you see the main <laughs> risks, so to speak, at the moment? Well, I think if you look at the latest G20 kind of uh, self-declared list of measures, uh, I, I think all countries are actually doing something or other. So uh, the answer is still, uh, you, you, I think you have to ask why are our countries undertaking these measures? And the answer is because external trade, uh, you know, is is uh, slowing down. So they want to make sure that domestic market is being uh, pr protected. So how to answer protectionism? Grow external trade. And mm -hmm. how do we grow external trade? Uh, complete, if, you, if we complete the Doha ne negotiations, which is about market access and creating a new rules-based framework, you are going to have a boost to the world uh, economy to the tune of anything to, for, to from $200 billion to $1 trillion. Uh, so that is the biggest boost. Then that would reduce the need uh, to undertake protectionism. Mm -hmm. but and the other, could... the other way is to make sure the rules work. Yeah. But, but, but your own country, Indonesia, has had its fair share of criticism, for instance, mm -hmm. of the, the decision to uh, slap a tariff on uh, wheat flour. Uh, what do you say about that? Uh, the wheat flour one is actually uh, using trade remedy, which is allowed by the WTO. It's an anti-dumping measure. So, you know, uh, while we have open trade, we also have fair trade. Yeah, uh, And uh, as long as we are undertaking policies which are uh, within the WTO rules, uh, as many other countries are doing, then uh, it is acceptable and it, it, is a, a, it provides a means under a framework where you can take measures to temporarily uh, protect your your uh, sector from uh, either a surge of imports or, uh, in the case of dumping, uh, you know, unfair pricing. Uh, so as long as we are doing it under the uh, WTO rules, then mm -hmm. uh, it it should not be uh, labeled as protectionism. It is really about fair trade, and that's why once again the rules based framework uh, is so important. We've talked about the, the the challenges that faces the next Director General, of the World Trade Organization. Uh, are, are you up to those challenges? Are, are you feeling ready to go, so to speak? Well, yes, uh, I am uh, humbled by the challenge, but I'm emboldened uh, by the belief that uh, given my experience, skills uh, and uh, leadership, that I, I'm able to uh, be, take the, ta the challenge uh, to be able to ensure uh, that we can uh, safeguard the integrity of the world trading system. But how do you want to do that? How do you want to knock the head of global leaders to, to, to make the case for 
for, for more global trade and against tariffs and subsidies? Well, I think it's still uh, the aspiration of all members. I, I, I believe all members still have that aspiration that, you know, we need to uh, strengthen the confidence in the multilateral trading system. Trade provides growth, jobs, uh, and development. I, I come from a large developing country where trade has transformed my country. Uh, and that case is still very, very strong, very compelling. Uh, the numbers show it. And we need to make sure that the political leaders see the benefits uh, of trade. Uh, and also find a way, you know, some, a lot of countries, including my own country, we also have domestic challenges as to mm. how we deal with certain sectors which will be affected. So also find the way out in terms of the policies that are needed uh, to, to be uh, complemented with the opening up. Uh, and that's why in, in the uh, Doha uh, development agenda negotiations, uh, there is provisions in there for uh, transition time and importantly for capacity building. So for countries that are not ready yet, uh, they, they are provided a longer time as well as uh, assistance to be able to meet uh, some of these obligations. You're now traveling around the world trying to drum up support for your, for your campaign. Mm -hmm. How's it going and, and what countries do you have behind you at this stage? <laughs> uh, well, uh, I, Indonesia is a member of ASEAN, so the ASEAN uh, countries, the, ten, the nine, nine other ASEAN countries have indicated their support officially. Uh, but all other countries at this stage uh, of the process are not uh, uh, making any commitments. Uh, but what, we, what I'm doing is going around to uh, several countries, several uh, regions, uh, to be able to exchange views and get input mm -hmm. uh, into ho how they see uh, the world trading system, the importance of trade, and uh, how uh, WTO should be improved. So I've been to the US, I've been to China, uh, and I've been to a number of European uh, capitals, such as Brussels, uh, Berlin uh, and Warsaw, and of course uh, Geneva. And uh, I'm going uh, now to Moscow, uh, as well as to some other African countries. What's the response been in, in, in Europe? Uh, the Europe, uh, European response has been uh, very positive, uh, and I do sense that uh, there is still strong commitment to the multilateral trading system, uh, and uh, wanting to, to have a successful outcome at the Bali ministerial meeting, uh, which is coming up in which December, is coming up the, in December. This year. yeah. So it's you know Indonesia is hosting that meeting, uh, and we are uh, hoping that there can be an early harvest that will give the momentum for uh, continuing to complete uh, the negotiations. Basically, that there will be a partial deal, but before there's a yes. there's a bigger deal yes. uh, resulting from That's the Doha right. trade round. Yeah. So there's a, you know, I, I believe uh, we are cautiously optimistic that there's this window of opportunity uh, to push forward. Uh, and we Still, though, the Doha trade run, it's been going on since yes, 2001. Yes, it's, yes. A, it's a very long tunnel indeed before we're going to see that light <laughs> at the end of it. Well, I believe there's uh, all members have still have the same aspiration uh, because of the benefits that it can generate. And, you know, something like agriculture, which is a very difficult a set of issues can only be uh, negotiated multilaterally. I don't see reducing uh, trade distorting export subsidies or domestic support can be addressed in a bi bilateral or a regional deal. Mm -hmm. and, and that was also the other part of the conversation that I've been having uh, in the European capitals because uh, the reality is that there are bilateral and regional agreements that are ongoing notably US-EU uh, uh, transatlantic uh, partnership. But what do you make of that, the fact that the European Union and the United States are now looking at going it alone, so to speak, and, and strike their own bilateral trade accord? Well, the key word is going it alone. We would hope that they're not going to go uh, in it alone. Uh, uh, and I think the WTO uh, will have to address these challenges in terms of you know, bilateral agreements and regional agreements, especially one uh, so large such, such as EU and US. And the way that we should be dealing with it is that to ensure uh, that these uh, bilateral and regional agreements, which are being done, I think, for practical reasons, because you want to move forward, it's okay as long as they're open. I just uh, briefly want to switch on to another topic. There's been a debate in the past few years that one of the global institutions w will need a leader from a developing economy. Uh, what do you make of, of that debate? And do you think that could benefit your campaign? Well, I, I think uh, we all believe, all, at least we as a member and myself, we believe that it, the WTO should be led by the most capable and competent person. Uh, and that includes, competency includes understanding 
development issues and emerging nation issues just because uh, the membership uh, of the WTO and of the world economy is increasingly uh, being uh, driven by uh, uh, emerging economies. Mm -hmm. So if, if that person uh, is coming from a developing country or an emerging nation, uh, is someone who can understand better these issues. Uh, finally, I want to ask you, are, are you confident? Are you confident that you'll win? <laughs> I'm confident that I have the capability, uh, the experience and skills. I have 25 years uh, working uh, in, in international trade, starting as an NGO, uh, having the academic uh, training as well as rigor, and you know the last uh, decade uh, in, in government and in, in traveling the world, uh, discussing global trade issues, negotiating, uh, so uh, I feel that uh, I'm confident because I feel that I have this the skill set to be able to contribute, and I have the vision and the passion that you know we need to safeguard the integrity of the uh, multilateral trading system, and most importantly, my own experience with my with my own country, living and breathing mm. trade and development. Trade can deliver development, can deliver growth, jobs, uh, and reduce poverty. All right. With that message, we're going to have to wrap up. Mari Pangistu, I'm you. very grateful to you that you took the time to speak to us. Thank you, Marcus. And with that, we're going to wrap up this program. Thanks for watching France 24.